Hello, Steve Fletcher here, and welcome to the Everything Guide to Learning to Play Guitar. Before we get started, can I ask you please to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube page, and really help me grow my business. Also, if you've got time, head over to FletcherSteve.com where you'll find a multitude of resources constantly being updated to assist you with your day-to-day -day guitar playing needs. Okay, so new song time and excitingly, a brand new chord for you to get to grips with. It's always a nice thing to do when you get to a brand new chord, something new, something more challenging to do. Of course, your old chords are that little bit more familiar to you. So there's always that little bit of an overlap where you have a new chord and you're trying to slot the how to do it in. Um, it doesn't always happen straight away. You do have to sort of maybe give it a couple of days um, or a good you know, amount of practice to get that new chord as tightened up as all your older chords, all right? This is completely normal. Um, quite frankly, it won't go away. That's always going to be the case. Whenever you do something new, it's going to take you a little while to integrate it into the stuff that you've been doing for a little bit longer. Okay, sitting on the dock of the bay, and again with your new chord, we've got two different versions of that A7 chord. And as we've said before, it doesn't matter really which one you do. When you see me playing this along to the metronome and to the real track, you'll see me mixing it up a little bit. You don't have to do that. I'm just doing that so that you can see that it doesn't matter which one you do. You can choose one and stick to that one if you like, all right? What you might find though with these alternative different ways is that different versions might sound better or worse with different songs. You know, it's all to do with how those notes, you know, uh, propagate in the ether, you know? Um, so yeah, different versions, different combinations of chords sound different when put together. So whenever we've got these alternative versions of chords, don't just go, I'm going to do the easy one and forget all the rest. It is worth mixing them up a little bit, um, experimenting with different voicings of the chords and just seeing which one you think sounds better in the song. All right, let's take a look at the A7. So we've got, we know our A chord looks something like this. And just like the A minor 7, it is essentially just a variation of the A chord. So there's the A chord. We know that one. All we do, the first way of doing A7 is to take off that second finger. Yoink. So there we go. We again reveal that open third string. So that's the first way of doing it. And in fact, sometimes you might see people doing that one and two rather than one and three. That's fine. Don't worry too much about that. Okay, your A7 with the two fingers will sound like this. The other way of doing it is adding, the same way as A minor seven, is adding that little finger to the third fret of the first string to get that same extra note. Both are valid, both are A7. I like to mix them up a little bit. You can do the same. Your A7 with the four fingers will sound like this. So again, like the A minor seven, the one with the higher note, I think will cut through that little bit more. So it's worth experimenting with those those uh, finger positions to see which one you think sounds best in each song. Yeah. 